Hello and welcome back to video 6 of the Gameplay Ability System Setup, Making a Gameplay Effect. I'm Thomas N, and we're going to jump right back into it. So, where we left off last time is we just created our first wait for attribute change function, where we waited for the speed attribute to change, and then we adjusted the player max walk speed based on that attribute. So, now, in order to see if this is working, we need to adjust this speed attribute. The way that we adjust attributes using the gameplay ability system is we use what's called gameplay effects. So we're going to create our first GE. So I'd recommend, again, take a look at the Unreal Engine documentation, take a look at what gameplay effects are, and a little better description than I could throw into this video or really make use of your time. Their descriptions are pretty good, so take a look at it and kind of get an idea. Effects are like containers, they hold visual effects, audio cues, as well as damage executions and lots of fun stuff. So. To get started, we're going to go to our Player Abilities folder, and we're going to right-click and create a new Blueprint class. In all classes, we're going to create a Gameplay Effect, and this is GE Speed Reduction. All right, and we're going to double-click to open that. And Gameplay Effects are a little weird, so you open them, and then you want to close them right away and reopen it again when you first create it. That way you get this nice view without the blueprint look. So some things we want to do in here, we want to set our duration policy for this to infinite. All right, so we're going to make sure that our target can only have one instance of this ability on it. So we can only slow our character once. And what we're going to do here is create a modifier we're going to modify the attribute, player attributes.speed. We're going to multiply it by 0.5. We're going to cut your speed in half anytime that you have this effect on you. And then in order to pull it off, we need to give a tag to this gameplay effect. So we need a gameplay effect asset tag, this top one here. The way these work is gameplay effects are nicely designed to be inherited from one another. So you can add tags to your gameplay effect and then create a child of it and the added tags from your parent class will exist in the combined tags unless you specifically remove them with a child um, and as we go we will i'm sure start implementing some of these sort of functionalities but first of all we're going to create a new tag for this gameplay effect so we're going to call this effect done buff but speed reduction as you go you might want to change these gameplay tags and get them like really finalized to what you want in order to adjust your gameplay tags you have to actually access the tag the default any file and adjust them it's all done in strings it's pretty easy to do you Now we can see the tags that I just got. We have some mumbo jumbo stuff, but then effect debuff speed reduction. This is the tag that I just added. So if you wanted to change this tag, change the structure, add something different, then do so in this file. So when you create gameplay tags, like you'll need to use them specifically, but being able to change them is pretty easy early on. You know, the better your designs are, the more effective your tagging is going to be. So for now, effect debuff speed reduction is perfectly fine. So now we have our tag and you can see it added to the combined tags up here, like I was mentioning earlier. And then if I were to make a child class of this really quick, just as an example and open it up, we could see, well, let me open it in a way we can actually see it. All right. Then we can see that, well, it inherited this infinite and all of these modifiers and these are now default values this doesn't say reset to default because these are default from its parent right and my combined tags are right here if I remove this and I compile and say the tags are still here right unless I specifically remove it because that's on the parent class if I remove it now it's gone okay. parent class Right here, yes. Okay. 
Alright, so we're going to multiply our speed by 0.5, we exist infinitely, we have this awesome tag here that we'll be able to pull it off. We're capping our stack limit, aggregating my target to 1. Alright, so now all we need to do is apply this GE to the player when we push a button. Now, since this is debugging and just an example, I'm going to open up the level blueprint, and I'm just going to put the button key in here. T for test. To apply a gameplay effect. And the gameplay effect class is our GE speed reduction. And don't worry about the level for now, but we'll go ahead and create a gameplay effect context handle. See, the level has to do with... So you can build in a level up system or like this thing does more damage based on what character level you're at and that's all controlled through your modifiers you know scalable floats you can you could do a graph that takes in the level and then outputs different amounts of damage and things we'll get into that in the advanced gameplay effects video and we'll also get into periods and application effects overflow effects and all, all these other sorts of things you can do in gameplay effects we will get into those as we go because it's kind of a lot to try to do all at once all we're doing now is we are applying that effect to ourself when we push the button key. so when we push play we should see this happen let's see here nope it didn't now why didn't it work I believe it's because we didn't assign it to the character. If we go to our character, we go to abilities, starting passive abilities, we didn't assign. So here it is, here's our speed passive, I compile and save, jump back over to the map, save, oh that's the map blueprint, haha, alright, I'm just going to close that, hit play. Oh, look at that. My speed goes down. And it only happens once if I push the button. And cool. Doesn't break the rest of our functionality. So now, the next thing we're going to do is remove the gameplay effect. And I'm just going to steamroll right through and we're just going to do two things in one video. We'll get through this. So alright, we're going to add the keyboard R key for remove. active effects with tags because we're just grabbing the effect itself tag and we're doing the effect debuff speed reduction and again tags just like attributes if you set them as literals in your functions right here or you use the make literal function they will not work so it's important that you create your tag containers as actual variables i prefer to use the prefix tc underscore for my tag containers just a general cleanup rule speed reduction right so i can pretty easily see exactly what that is just looking at it all right so now we have our reduction tags now when we push the r key it should pull that effect back off the character We slow down, we push R, we speed back up. We push R again, nothing happens. Push D a million times, only once. Alright. So, that is applying and removing gameplay effects. Thanks for tuning in. We will get into the next video. We will be creating the damage execution.